All right, folks, today we're gonna to be doing a tune-up on our 1994 Ford E350 van. Now this has the 5.8 liter motor in it, so it's a fairly straightforward procedure. We're going to be doing spark plugs, wires, cap, and rotor. Now if you do have one of the newer vans that has the 5.4 liter, do be aware that the spark plugs can be quite contrary and have known to break off in the cylinder wall. It's a serious problem. So if you have one of those motors, you may not want to consider just having the spark plugs changed by a mechanic. But being that this is the 5.8, should be no problem. So the reason why I decided to do a tune-up on Sasquatch is it had developed a very bad hesitation. So after a little bit of research, I decided that a tune-up might be in order. Now after the fact and driving the van, after the tune-up, I can tell you it did solve the problem. The van is running much better. In fact, I think it's running better than I have ever driven it. So these tune-ups can be extremely important. Now what I'm doing here is removing the doghouse because it will make accessing the spark plugs a whole lot easier. The second thing you're going to want to do is remove the air cleaner. Now I have a modified air cleaner so it looks a little different than what you might have but once the air cleaner is out you'll have easier access to the number one spark plug and also to the distributor. All right, so now we've got the doghouse out and I've got all the air cleaner stuff out of the way. So I should have pretty easy access to the engine from inside the van and outside the van here. So the first thing I'm going to do is swap all the spark plugs. Now I did go with the Autolite spark plugs. That is supposed to be original equipment manufacturer for this van. But one thing you should note is even if you do get the correct spark plugs for your vehicle that are specifically for it, most likely they will not be gapped properly. So what you'll want to do is either look at your manual or in my case I can look right here on the front of the vehicle and it tells me what the gap of the spark plug should be. So I'm going to go through and gap all my spark plugs and then we'll go start going through and systematically replacing all the plugs. So according to my documentation I need a gap between 042 and 046. I typically try to go somewhere in the middle because the spark plug can expand and contract with heat. So I went with about 0 0.044. Accessing the spark plugs on the driver's side is very easy from the doghouse. On the passenger side, the first two are quite easy to access, but the two that are closest to the front of the engine are a little bit harder to access. And the front spark plug, you will find that you'll need to access that from the front of the van. So real quick, I want to show you guys what these spark plugs looked like that came out of the van. Now these were a aftermarket spark plug that were supposed to offer a higher spark. Now to be honest, I don't know that these were bad or good for the van. I didn't really notice anything when I put them in. And one thing I do notice now is they seem to have a ton of carbon buildup, which I'm sure is affecting the performance now that they've been in a couple years. All right, so we've gone through and changed all the spark plugs. The driver's side is a piece of cake to get all the spark plugs changed. Passenger side, the front two plugs can be a little bit contrary, especially the very front one, uh, cylinder one. If you go down and reach underneath the alternator and work by a little bit of braille, you can get to it and it's not too bad of a job. So the next step is, is we're gonna replace the plug wires. I'm gonna do each wire individually so I don't screw up and mess up the firing order. Another thing is, again, I did choose to use Motocraft parts, so or original manufacturer parts on this. So yeah, we're going to go through and change all those now. So you're probably noticing I'm doing this in steps and starting the van after each step. Then that way I can test everything and make sure that if something goes wrong along the way, I have a pretty good idea where the problem ha might have happened. It's really important that you do not mess up your firing order. So doing the spark plug wires, I highly recommend that you just do one spark plug wire at a time. All right, so we got the spark plug wires routed. That takes a little bit of time and can be a little bit tedious, but you know, again, take your time on that because you don't want to screw that up and get the firing order all, all jacked. 
So the next step is going to be to replace the cap here where all the spark plug wires come and attach. And then this little rotor piece which actually goes underneath and spins. And as it spins, it kind of hits each one of these little nodes and since that's what creates the electrical spark to each cylinder. So these can get worn out and you can get a uh, bad connection as it spins around. So it's a good idea to replace these every so often. I have done a tune up on the van previous uh, since I've owned it, but I did not replace this cap and rotor and I probably should have when I did that. Now another point to make on doing the cap and rotor is just like doing the spark plugs, you really want to make sure that when you are moving the spark plug wires over to the new cap, you do it one at a time so that way you maintain the firing order. One of the challenges I have when I try to do videos showing myself working on the van is it's just a really tight space so it's really hard to get the camera in a space where you can actually see what I'm doing. But I have both caps sitting there and I'm just moving one plug at a time starting with the number one plug which is marked on top of the cap. The other thing you can't see me really do here is change the rotor. Now the rotor just slides off and then you just slide the other one on. Just make sure that it goes back in the exact position that it came off. All right guys, well we got the cap uh, changed out. It is a little tedious working in the small space and getting all the spark plug wires transferred over to the new cap. Definitely take your time. Again, you don't want to mess up the firing order. You can. On the cap, you'll see a number one that lets you know where you need to start and then just work your way around and again, take your time. Now this old cap, I do see some corrosive uh, buildup on all the little electrodes inside. I wouldn't say it's crazy amount, but definitely enough to affect the performance of the van. And what I really noticed is looking at the rotor, you look at the end of the rotor, it's, there's a lot of corrosion and it's been eaten away uh, pretty bad. So. I definitely think that we're going to see a little performance improvement in Sasquatch as we drive it. I know doing uh, these tune-ups on older vehicles in the past, it really can bring them back alive. So don't underestimate how much a tune-up can help your vehicle. And if it's been a while, might consider getting it done. So anyways, guys, if you guys enjoy seeing me do these little DIY maintenance items on Sasquatch, Leave me a comment down below, let me know with likes, and we'll see you guys again outside.